Hi, this is Gary with MacMost Now. On today's episode, let's take a look at personal hotspots on your iPhone. So your iPhone, like a lot of smartphones, can be used as a personal hotspot. What this means is your iPhone is connected to your mobile carrier and then it creates this little Wi-Fi network and you can connect other devices like say a MacBook, Windows laptop, or an iPad to this little network created by your iPhone and then surf the internet on those devices through your iPhone. So here's my iPhone and in order to enable personal hotspot I would go into settings and under there you can see personal hotspot is the third item from the top. But if I haven't enabled it before it wouldn't be there. I would have to instead go to general and then network and then under network I would have to turn on personal hotspot. If I turned it on right now it would just simply switch on. If I had never set up personal hotspot before it would give me some more options there. Now there are two prerequisites. First is that your mobile carrier has to support personal hotspots. Many mobile carriers worldwide simply don't offer this as an option. So there's no, nothing you can do, no way to turn it on. If your mobile carrier does support it then you have to enable it in your account. So you'd have to go log on to your mobile carrier's website and add that as a feature of your service. Or you may actually have to call them to add it. Now sometimes this is a little more complex. Like for instance for AT&T you have to choose a data plan that supports personal hotspots. So on my old unlimited data plan didn't support personal hotspots. I had to switch to a 3 gig per month plan that allows personal hotspots and pay for that. It was actually more expensive than the unlimited one but now I can actually use my iPhone uh, as a mobile hotspot so I can check my email and surf the web on my MacBook and iPad. Now once you've set that all up with your carrier you can just go into this control panel here in settings and you can turn on personal hotspot. Notice there there's a Wi-Fi password. Uh, you can go in and change that password. That's uh, because it's going to create a secure Wi-Fi network as it should so you need that password to log on with your other device. Uh, notice also there are other ways to connect as well. Um, you can connect using Wi-Fi which is the main way to do it. You can also do it using Bluetooth. You can pair your iPhone with a computer. So say your MacBook you can go in, turn on the Bluetooth and the control panel there and use that as a type of internet connection. Um, also you can use USB. So you can use a dock cable and connect that from your phone to your uh, laptop and then your Mac will instantly recognize that as a method for accessing the internet, add it to your internet preferences and you could surf the web like that. So a few things about personal hotspots. One is of course to keep in mind that you usually have bandwidth limits like for instance my plan has that 3 gig per month limit and on a laptop sometimes it can be very easy to suck down bandwidth a lot easier than on a small screen on the iPhone. But you're still restricted by the speed of your network and whether it's 3G or 4G uh, it's going to be pretty slow. So trying to get to those 3 gigs per month is actually kind of difficult unless you're in an area that is excellent uh, cellular reception and you use it a lot. Now keep in mind the new iPad if you got the one that has the mobile data connection to it uh, you can actually do this as well. You can share your iPad connection with say a MacBook or some other device in the area. Another thing to worry about is battery. This is going to use a lot of battery power. It's establishing a network with your mobile provider and it's also creating its own Wi-Fi network. So it's going to drain your battery pretty quickly. Uh, if you have to say wait at the airport for a while and you want to use this, try to find a place where you can plug in your iPhone. Um, it's not the kind of thing you just want to use all day without having a place to plug and recharge your iPhone. Cost wise it really depends on your carrier but say for me it's really adding an extra 20 bucks a month to my plan. Previously I was using a little mobile hotspot that I purchased individually with another carrier and that was costing me 60 bucks a month. So I'm saving quite a bit of money using this and also I always have my iPhone with me whereas I didn't always remember to bring that mobile hotspot device with me. So I hope you like this look at using the personal hotspot feature of the iPhone and also the iPad. Until next time this is Gary with MacMost Now. Want more video tutorials? Just go to MacMost.com, click on the videos link at the top of the page and then you can view all of the hundreds of MacMost videos by category.